The Roke are where sharks. They have four simple laws that they follow and we're gonna talk about them. They are also the stuff of nightmares as they come from the sea and it is horrifying. They are fish nightmares and I'm gonna tell you why. Let's get into it. Hello everyone, welcome to the Maple Table. My name's Nathaniel. This is a channel where we discuss lore around Werewolf, the Apocalypse, and Starfinder thus far. If that's something you're interested in, I would love to have you join me at the table. You can do that by hitting the subscribe button and the bell notification so that we can crack that YouTube algorithm. Very quickly, the set has changed and it will change a little bit more. I was hoping to get something that's a little bit better to look at than a sort of an off-kiltered view of what my office was. So hopefully you like the change. I got some new lights. I really like them. And I'm also getting something to fill up the space behind me over here. And uh, maybe we'll make it a little bit more flashy. Let me know what you think. The Roke are very old. Let's get that out of the way first. The Were Sharks, although maybe not the first changing breed, they are the one that has been around the longest with no natural predators or, or no extinction level event, at least until the 1940s. The Roke also pledged themselves to three spirits. Now, depending on which version you're looking at will depend on how this is worded. And in the previous versions of Werewolf the Apocalypse, second edition, revised, and uh, kind of those earlier versions, in those versions, the three spirits were essentially the same, the Wild, the Worm, and the Weaver, except the Roke just had their own names for them. They called them Ket, Kun, and Curl. Now, if you're looking at the W20 version, it's written like they're almost separate entities. So there's a little disparity there between the versions. Do with that information what you will. No matter which version you're reading, Ket is basically the same or similar to the Weaver. Kuhn is similar to the Wild. And Curl, or the Tentacled One, as they would also call them, would be related to the Weaver. The story goes that Kuhn saw that Curl was wanting to destroy the world, and that's why Kuhn made the Roke. Their purpose was to fight Curl, or the Tentacled One, and prevent the destruction of the world. No pressure, eh? And for many years, the Were Sharks performed this duty admirably. They were known to work in combination with the werewolves and with other changing breeds up until the War of Rage. And that's when the Were Sharks basically pulled back into the sea and stayed there. Many of them mourned the loss of their unseed brethren. That's what they called everybody who didn't live in the ocean. Now, let's put a couple of things into some perspective here. Our planet is mostly covered in water. About 71% of our planet is covered in water. And of the Earth's water, 96.5% of it is held by the oceans. So the were sharks had lots of territory, lots of space to grow, and no natural predators. They were the apex predator. And because of this, the Roke basically didn't notice humanity. They did see the odd ship passing by, and this would have gone through the millennia as we progressed from wooden ships with sails. Eventually, when we got to the modern age and you had motorboats or electric boats, that's kind of when they started to notice humanity a little bit. And that's simply through the act of pollution. And even then, it was limited in its scope because the ocean is so vast. So the Roke were not concerned about humanity. They hardly noticed its presence because it wasn't really affecting their lives. That was until the 1940s. There was just a small event that happened in 1936, and that would have been World War II. And one of the things to come out of that world war was the Manhattan Project, which happened around the 1940s. When they started blowing up the atomic bomb, above sea, or even in the underwater tests, that's when the Roke started noticing humanity's presence and just how dangerous they had become. The atomic bombs that were detonated not only destroyed the sea and plant life, it also ripped apart the umbra where these explosions happened. And because of the radioactive material that was left over from these explosions, it tainted not only the physical realm, but it also tainted the umbral realms as well, and it distorted them. And this was something completely new to the Roke. Now, this is also not to say that the Roke weren't aware of humanity's presence. The Roke actually found them to be quite tasty. Where do you think some of the stories of merfolk came from? The Roke were known to harass merchant vessels, jump up on board, eat the humans because they were kind of tasty, and go about their business. One other thing to mention through this is that the were sharks they are essentially immortal. A Roke cannot die of old age. Essentially what happens, once a Roke reaches the age of maturity, 
the aging process just stops. Which means the only way for a roke to die is through an unnatural process. They can also regenerate, much like the Guru. And also like the Guru, they are susceptible to silver damage. As I mentioned, the Roke were considered apex predators at least up until the advent of the nuclear bomb. That is when humanity became the apex predator of the planet, although they weren't actually fighting the Roke directly. This was a shocking realization for the Roke to come to, and it was realized with disastrous effect. Before we continue on, this is your mid-video reminder to please hit that subscribe button and that bell notification if you want to get more videos like this from myself. If you're enjoying it, please hit the like button as that lets me know that you want more of this. And now moving on. In 1955, the oldest council of the Roque gathered because they wanted to discuss what was happening with these small wounds. That was what they called a detonation site for an atomic bomb. There were so many of them, and it was starting to become worrisome for the Roque that they wanted to know what to do about it. They wanted to try to fix it. And because this was such an important event to the species, this was one of the largest Roque gatherings that had ever happened. A very large portion of the Roque gathered in a shallow part off the coast of San Diego. This grotto was called Turna'a. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but here's the spelling. While they were deciding what to do about all these nuclear explosions, that was when the US conducted their Operation Wigwam. This was a 30 kiloton nuclear bomb test that was done just above the water. It was twice the size of Hiroshima, and unfortunately for the Roke, it absolutely destroyed their numbers. The explosion killed many, the heat from the explosion killed more, and those that survived the heat and the explosion were killed by the radiation. This single event killed three quarters of the Roke population. The Roke understandably lashed out. They rightly believed humanity was responsible and they took it out on them. Ever wondered why people have a fear of sharks? When a Roke changes their shape, they are able to not only just take the shape of a freakish were shark mashup beast thing, they are also able to transform parts of their body into weapons. So you can have a sword arm that's literally attached to you. They can literally shoot their teeth out of their mouth as a very powerful projectile. And of course, not to mention, huge mouths, which they have used to bite people. It is one of their primary methods of attack, is you have all those teeth, you bite. They used these in their attacks against humanity. Ever since the Turna'a blast, the Roke have been trying to rebuild their numbers. Now the problem with the Roke is they breed very, very slowly. The gestation period for a Roke is close to two years, so it takes a while. One interesting fact about the Roke to help them propagate the species, and I can't seem to prove this in the W20 version, the Roke had either a gift or a right, I can't remember which one it is, but they were able to essentially proxy impregnate somebody from a distance. I think it was somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 feet. It doesn't look like that made it into the W20 version, but that was a thing in some of the older versions as far as I'm aware. As far as the laws of the Roke go, they're very simple. For number one, survive. It's the first law, it is the greatest law of theirs. You must live. The group that got caught in 1955 didn't do this one very well. The second rule, Roke are expected to hunt. They are excellent hunters. The purpose of the hunt is to call the weak, essentially. This keeps the seas full of the strongest creatures. Law number three of the Roke is to spawn. As they've discovered, the sea is not always safe, and they breed very slowly. So the third law is to propagate the species. The last law that they follow is to swim. And what this means to a Roke is that you can't stop moving. A Roke feels a constant pressure or a constant need to want to explore. It's just written into their nature. And this law of theirs is more or less a permission to just go out and find something new. The Roke have an interesting history when you start looking at it from the World of Darkness perspective. There's a few things that I didn't cover about the Roke today because I feel that this video is already getting a little long and having a second video to cover them would be 
would just be beneficial. Working the Roke into a Chronicle is going to be a little bit of a challenge for anyone, being that not a lot of stuff happens in the sea, or at least I haven't played a lot of games that incorporate the sea. And outside of water, a Roke is mostly useless, not entirely, but mostly. So it's difficult to work them into a story effectively, especially when you're mixing other changing breeds and the Roke, it's, it's difficult to get them all to mesh really well. If you're running an underwater game, go nuts. Have you ever played a Roke in your game? Tell me about it in the comments below. And how did your storyteller incorporate them into your game effectively? Up on the screen, I will have a playlist of other changing breed tribes that I've covered, so please check those out. YouTube will have made a recommendation for you as well. My name's Nathaniel. You've been watching The Maple Table. Thank you so much for your subscription. Thanks for stopping by, everyone.